All right, I had a company reach out to me, uh, emailed me, wanting to know if I would be interested in testing their plasma cutter. Actually, they sent, they mentioned a, uh, a welding machine. So, and then I mentioned back a plasma cutter as well, and they wouldn't send both machines at one time. I don't blame them. So they sent one, they sent the uh, plasma cutter first, which is awesome. Uh, this company is Best Art. But the camera here is sitting on the box, so uh, let's turn the camera around and show you the box, and then, I'll, of course, I'll open the box up off camera and get into it a little bit better. So let's do it. All right, as you can see, it's the uh, Best Arc BTC 500 DP. 7th gen it runs on 110 as you can see right there runs on 110 or 220 there's all the adjustments you can do to it it's made in china 60 percent duty cycle it's a high frequency pilot arc so anyway There's the rest of the stuff. Let's uh, get the box open and check this thing out, right? Okay, I got it out of the box. Uh, here's the torch lead and the consumables and all that. So, uh, I don't know, can you, can you see that good? I guess I'll get it out and hold it up and, and show you. That way you can see me too, right? Anyway. Most importantly, comes with a book. Comes with an air hose. Now, I don't really know why it comes with this. And I think, yeah, see it comes with some clamps. You see them in there, the clamps. Some pipe tape, there's two clamps. And of course it comes with some extra consumables for the, uh, for the torch. But why it would come with pipe tape and these clamps, I don't really know. Because on the back of the machine, it has a fitting for a quick disconnect on your air hose. So maybe they should keep the air hose and these two little clamps and use the cost of this and give you a couple more consumables for the torch maybe. I'm just saying. I mean, if, if you're not going to use this, I, mean, I don't know of anybody that uses these. But anyway, here is the, and it's the small den, ground clamp. Now, however, it does seem to be a pretty decent ground clamp, even though the, the cable is a little bit on the small side, but it is what it is. We'll see how it works out. Let's see if I can find a place to put it here. It comes with an adapter to plug it, the machine into here and then plug this into the wall to run it on 110 or you need that kind of wall outlet to put, run it on 220, right? Comes with some candy. You might want to... I'm just kidding. And it comes with the... Uh, Torch lead. Obviously, it would have to come with that, right? Let me get this bag open and uh, check it out a little bit better. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and get it open and set it, set it up on the machine, and then we'll come back. Okay, I got it all set up. As you can see, this is why I need another uh, over here. Right back there, you probably can't see it, but back there is my 220 outlet. I need another one like this that way weld or the the welding machines or this can be in that outlet and i can run either my heater or my air compressor on the other one because this runs on 220 so does my air compressor so there that is right 
I mean, this will run on 110, but it won't cut as thick as stuff. And all I have over there is a GFCI, and I don't really want to run it on that outlet. So there that is. So hopefully I can get a little bit of cutting done with the air pressure that's in my tank without having, because I'm not going to be able to run both of them at the same time. So that kind of sucks unless I do run this on 110. I might, because I'm just cutting thin stuff. But uh, yeah, I need another 220 outlet ran. Okay. I'm gonna hold this up, let you uh, check this stuff out. Yeah, I don't know why it's all blacked out right here. It's supposed to be. A... I would assume that would, was the thickness of metal tell you what voltage to set it on and what PSI but it's blacked out but anyway the important stuff's up here too so if you need to see that any longer then just pause the video okay the t it comes with two extra uh, tips but it don't come with the extra little pink ceramic thing or the extra ring that goes around it that the guide so you might want to get <clears throat> some extra ones if you need them i do have i do have a uh a 40 piece set coming from them on amazon it's on my amazon store uh, under welding equipment so is this if you want to check it out go check it out it's not a bad price but we're fixing to see how good it works uh so anyway Let's turn this on and show you a little bit better. And I'll get the machine or the camera down and show you the back of it. On the back, it has where your air, just a fitting sticking out that your air hose hooks to, quick, quick disconnect. And it has a, uh, I guess like an air sep or a water separator, where if it had water in it and pressure, you could, uh, get the water out of it. Anyway, hold that thought. I forgot to turn the air on. That would help, right? Okay, let me see if I can zoom in just a little. Yes, I'm gonna be off screen, but it is what it is. As you can see here, here's your PSI. Now this, one thing I like about this is you don't have to reach back here to uh, set the air pressure or look back here to, to read the gauge on the side to see what their pressure is set at it's right here it's digital and to set it instead of having to pull the trigger on the torch to figure out because you know just like any air hose once you pull the trigger the pressure is going to go down from what this is set at so all you do is push this and it lets the pressure or the air go through so you can set see what it says now 48 but when it's on it's only 40 that's pretty cool and you can adjust the air pressure right here on the front of the machine instead of in the back now here you have the 2t and 4t setting it's right you can see it's on 2t and you see it says 220 let me see if I can zoom in a little bit more. You see it says 220 right there. Now, if we was plugged into 110, it would say 110 right there. And, of course, this is your amperage. With it on 220, it goes up to 50. I think with it on 110, it goes to like uh, 30. Anyway, here's 2T, 4T. Now, 2T means when you pull the trigger on the torch, just like when welding, you pull the trigger on it, you gotta hold the trigger in and it'll cut. You let off the trigger, it stops. 4T is you, you pull the trigger in, you can let off the trigger and it continues to cut until you pull it in again and release it. Okay, right here you have 
Can you see that? Maybe you can see that a little better now. Right here you have this button here. That's post time. And post art. Or pilot art rather. See it says three seconds. You can adjust it from three to 15 seconds. For the post time. That's post flow time. Meaning when you stop the cut. How much how many seconds the air still flows through the torch. Now, obviously you're not welding, so it's not to uh, protect the weld or the cut. It's to cool off the torch, to prolong your uh, consumables in the torch. And now right here is pilot art. It also goes from five, well, that says one second to uh, 15 seconds. The book says, I think three to 15 seconds. Yeah, three to 15 seconds. So that's kind of off a little bit. But anyway, there that is. I don't know. I'm, I think I'm going to put it on about 10 seconds. Maybe I may adjust it up or down. We want to make the consumables last as long as we can, right? And of course, let me move everything down. Oh, check this out. It came with this little wrench. And what this little wrench is for? Beats me. I mean, you usually got to use a, a pair of pliers or something to get. Let me show you. To get uh, this piece loose. This piece. Can you see that? Anyway, like I was saying, this is the uh, tip that screws in there. And no, that wrench does not fit on here anywhere, so you got to use a pair of pliers. Because I took the torch apart to make sure all that stuff over there was tight. And it actually looks like uh, the arc has been struck on that, so maybe they tested it out and make sure it works. Hopefully they did, right? Anyway, here's the electrode. The wrench will fit on here. You see the little flats? And it just screws in there. I don't know why they give you... So apparently they give you they give you two extra. So they give you three of these and three of the tips. But they only give you one of the little metal wire guide. And one of the uh, cups. Let me see if I can find it in here real quick. Yeah, see? That goes on that. That's the little pink ceramic cup. They only give you one of them. They should have at least maybe gave you two. Or here's a thought, since they gave you three, maybe they should give you three of them too, huh? Instead of giving you this hose, give you that stuff. That's the stuff you need. You don't even need this hose. What are you gonna use this hose for, right? Just my thought. Anyway, so uh, let's get back over here. I mean, zooming back in, the ground, your ground clamp goes here. I already got it over there clamped to the welding table. And uh, I need a new welding table. Your two wires hook here. I wish they would have did something different here. I don't, I don't really like this. Anyway, like I was saying is, you see this? But if this wasn't in the way, I mean, I know they're hooking to two different terminals, but I don't really really like that. I could have twisted it around it, I guess. But anyway, uh, let me see. One of them is the uh, pilot arc, and one of them is the torch switch. This one is your pilot arc, and the red one is your torch switch. So, you want to try this thing out a little bit? Wait a minute. 
Much better. Okay. Let's go over there and uh, try it out. All right. Hopefully you can see this. I got a little piece set up right here. Let me uh, see if I can zoom it in some. You see it right here? A little piece. Let's, let's try it. You got to bear with me. I got to get my glove on. And I'm not using any eye protection. I probably should. I'll show you how thick this is in just a minute. Okay, as you can see, hopefully it'll focus. It does have a little bit of Come on now, focus. Wait, let me let me zoom it back out. Oh, I guess it is. It wasn't. There we go. Maybe it'll focus. It does have a little bit of dross on it. But could be the way I have it set up. Who knows? Let's move this over here out of the way and let's see how easy it is to get it off. Chip and hammer. Got it off. Knocked it right off. It's, it's cut pretty good. It didn't cut very straight, but that's my fault. All right, let me uh, get the other piece that I cut off, picked up, and show you it. All right, here it is. I don't know which end of that I just cut, but there you go. I didn't clean anything off of it yet. So, got a little piece of sheet metal here. I think it's a uh, 16 gauge. So, and I got a thicker piece of bar. Wait a minute. Let's cut something a little bit thicker first, shall we? Let's do that. Let me get set up for that. All right. I have a little bit thicker piece set up right here. And, I, and this is my piece of sheet metal I'm going to cut here in just a second. Uh, after I get done cutting them, I'll show you the thicknesses of them at the end of the video. So bear with me. Let me get my glove on. Wait, let me, let me turn the machine up just a little bit. All right, here we go. Let's try this. All right, here's the piece I just cut. I don't know why, I guess it don't want to focus too good when it zoomed in. All right, so let's get, let's get set up on this piece of sheet metal and get back into it. All right, got my piece of sheet metal set up here. We're gonna cut it from here to here. You got this as a guide. So let me get my other welding glove on and get into it. I turned the machine down a little bit, I turned it back to 40 and I got it on 15 amps. We're gonna see how that works. I might need to turn it up to 20, but this is thin. So let's try it out. And I'm also using a welding shield this time. And so I might have to stop. Hope not, but we'll see.
All right. As you can see, let's now maybe it'll focus. It does have a little bit of dross on it. Let's see if we can get it cleaned up and how easy it is. I'll be right back. Okay, here's the first piece that I cut. You see how thick it is. It's pretty thin. There's the cut. Here, this one's still kind of kind of warm. Here's the second one. And the cut. You see how thick that one is. I don't know, this might be quarter inch. Might even be thicker than that. And of course, I didn't bring the piece of uh, sheet metal over here. It's just 16 gauge. Anyway, uh, like I forgot to mention the, the on off switches on the back, like most welding machines. And it when you get done cutting, I don't remember if, it, if the fan came on when I first turned it on or if it didn't. I don't know how to get that little, there's a little square box around my face that keeps flashing. It's annoying, anyway. But if it does come on when you first turn it on, it after it comes on and uh, gets ready to go, it, it'll cut back off until you start cutting. And then when you do cut, it'll the fan will run to cool the machine until the machine cools down and then it'll cut off. As you can hear now, it's it's on and it's not running. So let me let me just cut the machine off. Okay. This machine, I, I don't really care for the color. You know, I wish it was red. At least then it would match my welding machines. But, I mean, it's a color, right? It cuts. And this, this here is pretty thick. This is at least frame material, or at least close, or it may be over the thickness, you know, for automobiles and stuff and trailers and whatever. So, uh, and it, it cut that with, with no problem. And I, I'm pretty sure it'll cut all the way up to half inch. At least that's what they say. I, I think I did see a video of a guy cutting three quarter inch uh, let's see, he cut three quarter inch with it, but it wasn't really all that efficient. And it almost cut one inch. I think this was the machine. But anyway, if it'll cut half inch, that, uh, that's all you need, really. And of course, it'll cut aluminum and stainless too. You already knew that, right? So, and like I said in the beginning of the video, I did not pay for this. They sent me this to review. Hopefully after this review, they'll send me a welding machine. Or maybe the better, uh, I think it's XP, where this one is BTC 500 DP. I think it's XP or something like that. It's, for, uh, it's suitable for a plasma table, CNC table. This is not. Not because of the pilot arc, but because of the high frequency. Uh, they say it'll interfere with the CNC table. So if I would have known that, I would have suggested them sending me the one that is suitable for a CNC table. That way, when I do get a CNC table, I'll be ready. Let's see. No, the ground didn't get hot. Now, the one other complaint that I have... Can you see? See this? This is just like a sheath. It's like a rubber, vinyl, whatever. It, it needs to be a little bit more robust, a little bit heavier duty than that. Because, you know, when you're cutting stuff, what happens? Slag and everything else goes down on the ground. And with this, this, dragging around on the ground, it 
more than likely won't last that long. I don't know. We'll see. But I'm sure as as a homeowner or a DIYer using one of these machines every now and then, it'll work out just fine. So again, Best Art, thank you for sending this out to me. I really appreciate it. I've been wanting one. So if you guys want to get one, go check out my Amazon link down there in the description. Go to the Amazon and check it out. Also, while you're down there, go a little bit further down and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this machine. Anyway, that's all I got for this one. Hope you liked it. Like always, I'll see you in the next one.